Venting Anna. The uh, is this the first? No, it's not the first Shonda Rhimes. Um, right. So this one. Is, so this is the second Shondaland Netflix show following Bridgerton. However, Shonda Bridgerton. Rhimes herself didn't actually create Bridgerton. She did create Inventing Anna. So depends on your uh, distinction there. Um, yeah, it's actually the first show Shonda Rhimes has made herself since Scandal. So it's been been a long time. She also didn't directly create How to Get, Get Away with Murder as well. But obviously Shonda Rhimes, one of the most prolific uh, television creators in the last 20 years, of course, starting it all off with Grey's Anatomy, which is still on TV. And uh, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> but uh, a, a lot a lot was made of, uh, you know, her signing a huge Netflix overall deal in 2017, followed closely by, you know, Ryan Murphy and Kenny Barris. And in general, these big overall deals from Amazon, Netflix, whoever it is, seem to be like a big thing for television creators to lock people up. Right, like even even like yep. Netflix, they're like, let's get the Duffer Brothers, keep them in house, you know, following Stranger Things. It's happening to everyone, but it's been it's been in a minute for Shonda Rhimes to actually make something. Definitely not the Ryan Murphy uh, tact, right? Ryan Murphy, I'm gonna make a lot of shit. You're probably not gonna like it of it though. Shonda Rhimes <laughs> takes her time. Finally, her company makes Bridgerton after like three years into the deal, and Bridgerton is the most successful show on Netflix at the time of its release. Uh, so yeah, it worked out, right? So this is the second oh, yeah. show, second show, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's not a, it's not going to be as popular as Bridgerton. That goes without saying. But it's also just uh, kind of perplexing for the mistakes that we have in this, which is a, a shame because of the source material, the the real life adaptation of this Anna Delvey story should have been made for a better miniseries than it ended up doing here at Netflix. So ultimately just kind of a big disappointment. Yeah. And you know, um, the premise feels ripe for a, a good miniseries based on the New York times, uh, article, uh, yeah, New York how, magazine, sorry. Yeah. New York magazine. Correct. How Anna Delvey tricked New York's party people. Um, that's from a few years back actually. Right. And, uh, it follows the story of Anna Sorkin who, like the article kind of says kind of just like tricks her way into the life of these socialites in new york city um and you know looking at the cast you think there's some people in here that i think we we like or at least feel like are in, in a good position uh for you know like a star rise julia gardner i think is probably the, the yeah. person people know Emmy most winner. from ozarks um anna Ch- uh, chlumsky from beep uh, yeah. as the headliner here so or uh, sorry not the headliner but um one of the the co-stars uh you know looking down the list you have people like laverne cox um anders home so like yeah. some decently big name people with this but it sounds like you were lukewarm on it yeah totally and it's actually really funny too so the, the person the journalist who wrote the story the anna, anna story in new york uh jessica pressler she also write, wrote the hustlers at scores the story that became the movie hustlers it's really funny to see someone have multiple like banger magazine articles like that in a short amount of time but the fatal flaw with inventing anna is that uh the journalist is the main character anna is not and we're just kind of bogged down in like the the how how the how we're gonna tell the story of anna uh to to the public and we're not spending enough time watching anna like lie and cheat and mislead all these people the flashbacks are very intermittent even though this is a bloated uh series with like super long episodes and everything like it just i I feel like we just waste so much time and and the 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 perspective that that we're given is is, isn't isn't compelling and it also kind of like takes a like a side of like trying to like paint Anna in like a more nebulous light perhaps positive light when in reality she was just this scammer hustler figure that took advantage of people if anything I would have rather seen the show explain or lampoon how all these like elite New York social life people got duped by some total fraud like that would have been compelling as well but it, it never really commits to any any of these lanes and it's just uh, kind of dull 
And on top of that, you have Garner, again, Emmy winner, well-liked person on the rise for sure. The performance from Julia Garner is very up and down. I think a big part of that is the accent that she has to do for this character, which is not far off from the real life accent, but the accent's like super grating and weird. It's like a Russian German hybrid. Uh, when, when, when Anna has like meltdowns or gets mad and stuff, it's just like really grating. This is nothing about the show is as fun as you wish it would be given the, the source material. And a lot of the stuff with the journalist character is kind of, tropey ground that we've gone down before with all kinds of stories so i just it, it's kind of a, a perplexing like miss from someone like shonda rhimes who really knows like tv convention and how to make things compelling so i've found it really just 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 disappointing because like we're gonna get so many shows this year about like real life people and real life like drama and stuff you got to make it fun or compelling in some yeah. way and just inventing Anna doesn't, doesn't, doesn't do it well enough. Ah, I feel like, like we've had that problem with other shows recently. None that are coming to mind, but it just feels like a familiar, like a critique where it's like, ah, they didn't really go in any one direction. They kind of just tried to play it all the way down the middle and it just didn't yeah, really work out. And, you know, it's, it's funny because Shonda Rhimes, I think at least in some of her other shows has had the ability to make things that are, you know, at least captivating and fun. Um, if not, you know, uh, actually really good. And, you know, I'd say like probably the early seasons of Grey's Anatomy, people would really ride for as really good yeah, television shows. Absolutely. Uh, the more recent seasons, like you said, we'll, we'll refrain from comment at this time, but you know, days of our lives is still on the air too. So like, right. You know, these sorts of things kind of just continue. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to not make it even like fun, a fun hang, it's just kind of like, mm, I don't know, a failure yeah. of the show in general. After Bridgerton, uh, Rhymes actually did an extension with Netflix, add another five years to her deal. Um, and Bridgerton has actually been renewed for season four. Season two is uh, coming up soon. So we're going to get plenty more of Rhymes on Netflix. And it sounds like Netflix with this deal is also trying to like expand beyond the traditional, like we make shows and you subscribe and we give them to you kind of thing. They're like, want to do more live events and like, real life things around their properties and rhymes might be involved in that so keep an eye on that i suppose but yeah inventing anna it's uh, it's it's tough to recommend it's really just just disappointing given how uh compelling the story is I, i've read the new york story it's, it's it's very interesting just to read about like the mechanics of this kind of very specific yet peculiar grift but the show just doesn't make any of it interesting unfortunately 